Okay. And so mm. whenever you started to uh, get some interest in crypto, like how did you like enter the ecosystem? So basically you were mentioning that you were working in security before crypto, but how, how did yeah. like crypto got your attention and how did you say, decided like, okay, let's go. I want to work in crypto and I'll probably spend some time or like years uh, in this industry. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, so actually, it, the story uh, is back to the year 2016. Um, uh, in the year 2016, so our research group made a, uh, I would say, a, a very significant progress in the uh, formal verification field that says that we, for the first time, successfully verified uh, the correctness and security of a multiprocessor OS kernel. So previously, all the verification can only be done for sequential and the uniprocessor uh, software. And you can't, uh, it's very, really, really hard to prove the uh, security for, let's say, concurrent programs and uh, distributed protocols and distributed uh, uh, programs because the search space, the proof space can be infinitely uh, large. You know, kind of like when, when things yeah. are wrong uh, uh, concurrently, right? It can have many interleavings, many combinations. So the search space can be so huge that you can't uh, complete the, the proof. And in the year 2016, we made the breakthrough and we built Certic OS, a fully verified hacker resistant uh, 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 multi processor OS kernel. And in the same year, uh, you may know that there is a very famous hack uh, called the DAW attack happened on the yeah. Ethereum uh, network. And uh, so people realize that, well, uh, these new kinds of um, uh, programs running on top of blockchain also needs, well, uh, new kinds of technology to protect their uh, security and safety. Because first of all, it's a totally new uh, uh, technical stack, right? Everything's new. Underlying blockchain <laughs> consensus, right? Smart contracts. So new issues. Uh, yeah, yeah, new <laughs> issues, new languages, right? New programs and so on. Uh, second, people realize that it's different from web two uh, application. In a sense as well, you can run the, the thing on the cloud, right? And if you get attacked, uh, and in their website may, may, may be down for several minutes or something like a loss, actually nobody cares in many cases, <laughs> but even for a very small Web3 app, a very small smart contract running on blockchain, it may manage, uh, let's say, uh, millions of uh, dollars worth of cryptocurrency, right? And uh, any single uh, vulnerability may ruin that uh, product, may ruin that application, or even um, uh, uh, inter uh, leads to a huge loss to the users of to that app. And it's, and it's a totally new uh, domain and uh, hello yeah yeah I can hear yeah. it works okay no worries okay, okay. yeah <laughs> so the the picture <laughs> no <problem. stopped> moving <laughs> okay sometimes yeah, so... uh, I just stop moving so sorry for that <laughs> okay <laughs> okay got it yeah so uh, you can see that it's a totally new application so totally new domain people need a new technology and the traditional security techniques may not be enough. And actually, security is just one abs uh, aspect in this domain. Uh, I would say when we talk about auditing, it's, it's actually it's beyond the scope of just uh, uh, cybersecurity. Uh, but starting from that point, and the people are looking for new technology that can be used to right to help secure this um, uh, young in, uh, young domain, young industry. And actually, we uh, got in contact with the Ethereum Foundation, so they are also looking for new solutions, right, uh, that can prevent uh, the issues like the DAO attack and so on. And uh, so we get a, a grant from Ethereum Foundation. Uh, uh, focusing on uh, the uh, cybersecurity of smart contracts and so on. And then we feel like, well, this is really a huge opportunity and our technology yeah. can indeed be helpful. So that's how we started certainly in the year 2017. And uh, well, uh, then we quickly became the, the leading uh, firm uh, in, in this space. So maybe to sum up a bit, so basically... Since there is like a new technology uh, and a new stack, there is like new issues. And before, like we had like Web two. Whenever you have like any issues and exploits on Web two, 
people don't lose money. So it's it, mm. it's more like indirect losses because it could be mm. data leak or other kind of mm. leaks. So like it had like I would let I would say less value to com like compared mm. to like people losing money whenever there is like an exploit uh, or like a, an issue on the blockchain. So uh, yes. that's when like uh, Certix uh, was created with like the Ethereum Foundation grant. And my question is pretty basic, is like before like um, Certix started existing, um, did some like other kind of crypto security firms existed? Uh, yes, I believe there are uh, several I would say cybersecurity firms uh, exist that serving a blockchain and crypto space, and some some of them have already you know uh, exit the, the the stage. Uh, some of them uh, are still um, very active. I would say Surrey is one of the is among the one of the earliest uh, pioneering uh, uh, auditing firm in the in the space. And uh, also, I want to mention that uh, you know everyone talk, uh, is talking everyone, now. Everyone knows about smart contract auditing, blockchain auditing, and so on. And uh, uh, we can find that well, previously people don't know what uh, uh, what <laughs> does it mean. And I would say that even today, many people still got confused about the term. And also, you can see that well, this term is not uh, widely used in the space for Web two, for PC, and so on. Right, but it is very uh, widely used in Web three space, in the blockchain space. Uh, actually, there are some subtlety uh, there. Maybe I can explain later. Mm -hmm. but w would you say that mm -hmm. like Web three is more audited and more like monitored um, compared to like the traditional finance and Web two, or like is still like mm -hmm. the, the traditional finance still mm -hmm. very monitored and, and way more monitored compared to the Web three ecosystem? Yeah, I would say that actually is the the technologies we use and the, the goal we try to achieve are quite different. Um, you know, so first of all, auditing does not equal to cybersecurity. So, the, so first of all, many people got confused. People feel like, well, auditing means cybersecurity. Auditing means that there's no box, there's no vulnerabilities in your code. Actually, <laughs> these are all misunderstanding and. Uh, uh, so in Web2 space, in previous, let's say, pl uh, computing platforms like cloud, mobile, PC, and so on, cybersecurity, uh, there are so many cybersecurity firms, so many cybersecurity products, uh, and so on. But uh, in Web3 space, in blockchain space, when we talk about auditing, I would say it's different from security and also is beyond uh, security. For example, so, for example, the goal of auditing is not to help you identify, identify bugs. The goal is help help you to try to identify the mismatches or the differences between the code, between the product, I would say, and the expectation. This expectation can be expectation from the developer, from the designer of the product, or can be the uh, expectation from the users. So that's actually our job. We try to identify these mismatches. For example, like the projects claim that they are decentralized uh, project but there are centralization risks in their code, in their key management, and so on. And then, well, we want to identify these mismatches and uh, uh, disclose to the product owner, product developer, and the product users. And that's our job. Would you describe your job and your position as stressful? Or uh, like, how do you handle like, maybe all these possible like, uh, conflicts, exploits, leaks, real-time like, issues? when you have like such a position as like a security firm in the web free. Mm. Mm. Cette vidéo vous est présentée en partenariat avec DYDX. DYDX est LA solution décentralisée qui vous permet de trader les principales crypto-monnaies de manière liquide sur mobile et ordinateur. Contrairement à la majorité des exchanges, vous n'avez pas besoin de vous KYC ici et vous récupérez la majorité des frais que vous payez. Plus de 60 000 personnes utilisent déjà DYDX et j'en fais partie, alors qu'attendez-vous Scannez le QR code sur votre écran ou utilisez le lien dans la description pour créer votre compte avec un simple wallet et profitez de 5% de réduction sur vos frais. Allez, on repart sur l'interview. Uh, yeah, so I would say if we are just a cybersecurity firm, then our job, I would say, can be easier. That is, we just participate all, in all this so-called bug bounty, right, program and so on, try to find bugs, submit, get bounty and so on. That, that can be easier. But an auditor is similar to, I would say, financial auditor in the uh, traditional, you know, IPO uh, industry. Well, uh, so their job, right, is not to help, help them find uh, the, 
the bugs in the financial systems, right? Uh, in the in the in the company, they try to help identify mismatches and uh, and the disclose information to potential investors, right? In the IPO and after IPO and so on, and uh, similar actually to our job in a sense that well, in this space, people say that well, in code we trust, right? We don't trust centralized en- entities. We trust code. We want to trust code. We want to let code control our asset, control our cryptocurrencies. But first of all, code itself is not trustworthy. <laughs> Second, most of the uh, users they can't understand code. All right. Third. Code is also just one part of this big product. It still have web web two uh, stuff. It also have key management stuff. It has compliance related uh, issues, right? Uh, many uh, uh, it has well economic models. We said that well, most of the players uh, users in blockchain space actually they are experts in in many aspects in order to be able to participate right in uh, um, in this uh, industry so i would say our job is try to identify as much uh, so first of all try to uh, define what is uh, the standard right what is this uh, a process of uh, checking those uh, mismatches of auditing these projects second how to uh, uh, efficiently uh, disclose if this information to both the owners and the users. So basically the project tells you like the expected behavior is this one. And then you check what's like the reality whenever you check like everything so that they can fix it and make it the the closest to the expected behavior, right? Yes. Uh, I can give Um, you, let's say one example. Uh, for this, uh, it's not our uh, client. It's not our auditing client. But uh, this is a uh, news. Uh, I would say you can you can get it from the news that uh, uh, we know Worldcoin, right? Worldcoin is yeah. free, uh, hot projects, right? Uh, funded by the founder <laughs> of Open, uh, the CEO of OpenAI, and uh, yeah. so it's pretty hot. And uh, you know, it try to uh, uh, give all the the users uh, ID right through this orb. Uh, uh, operator and uh, and uh, scan your uh, iris or yeah, scan your yes, <laughs> scan your eyes, right? You get Did you? identity, right? Yeah, I haven't <laughs> tried that, and uh, right, so this kind of product. So, I would say, uh, when it re- released the pro- uh, this, this project, uh, people actually have some concerns about the data privacy, right? So, well, I will scan my eyes, very private and very important information. Like it's going to be uploaded, and I hope that it, my privacy Everything is be, going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, everything should be fine. And uh, people trust this project. People trust you know, the team, and many people participate in, in it. And, uh, well, the, so the expectation from both the user and the developer are that, well, this data must be well maintained, right? Must must be well uh, captured, and it's very hard to 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 attack the system to get the data. But then in the news, you can see that we actually we sub we 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 review this product, and um, it's kind of an like auditing process, and we identify an uh, issue, a mismatch, in a sense that really? actually attacker, yes, attacker oh can my God. become an uh, orb operator <laughs> and uh, <laughs> potentially get the sensitive information, and we submit this. Uh, but this mismatch, uh, I, w- I will now call it a bug. I will call it a mismatch. Uh, and we submit this to Worldcoin and we get an acknowledged. And there are some news you can check online about, about it. This is a very uh, typical example that I would say this is not a actual typical cybersecurity issue. It is a mismatch between the expectation and the real behavior of the product. So what you mean exactly is that basically I could be an attacker and um, make sure people like uh, think I'm like part of the team and scan the iris and give them maybe like some cash in exchange and then they would find like they would think that they got their iris scan from like Worldcoin but it was from like an attacker and a fourth party that is not involved with with Worldcoin right. Uh, well, it's uh, it's uh, a little bit more subtle than that, but basically, it's it's kind of like uh, you know, a hacker can get can like can get control of that uh, orb operator and uh, get access to sensitive data. So that's okay. uh, uh, high level uh, high level high level <laughs> thing. So uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
understand. Um, so, so far, we, we probably discussed most of the time here of how you started and, and what's the main idea behind Theoretic, but maybe could you give us like uh, an overview of what like Theoretic is doing and what's your vision for Theoretic? Uh, yeah, so uh, basically, you know, we, we help uh, these Web3 blockchain uh, projects and company. We help them, first of all, help, help them secure their code base. Second, help help them do the audit, not only for the cybersecurity aspect, but also for, let's say, their economic model, their uh, compliance or regu uh, regulatory uh, risks, their operational risk, like a key management and so on, like even the, the, the market uh, risks. Uh, and, and also when they use, let's say, mobile devices or hardware devices, we also help try to help them uh, reduce the risk uh, on that side. And this is the first our job. We serve uh, this uh, Web3 industry companies, blockchain industry companies. Uh, second is that we will try to disclose this information uh, or uh, this, uh, let's say, if we identify mismatches, if we, if we identify some risks, and uh, uh, also when, uh, uh, when we can like uh, identify some hacks and issues, how can we uh, make all this information uh, public to, let's say, the, the general users and also how to make it as accessible as possible? Because, you know, many uh, users, they don't understand code, right? How to uh, help them understand the risks the mismatches in the projects uh, and so on. So I would say our these are our uh, main main jobs. And, so it's kind uh, so of far, like a, I think, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> it, sorry to interrupt you. It's kind of like a three sixty degree vision of like potential risks for like all the protocols and, and companies involved in the ecosystem. So it's you, you mentioned that it could be like auditing the code and and like highlight some issues, but it's also about like the cold storage maybe. 